You're the granddaughter of Asha Gorky. Yes. Um, tell me a bit about how you got engaged into the foundation's work, what your role is today. So I always felt this, this is a with a with family, you also get a lot of family dynamics and you have generational dynamics and uh, different personalities. And you, as a child, you're born in into a hierarchy of sorts and some families are more hierarchical than others. Anyway, my grandmother was a very powerful personality and as long as she was alive, nobody really felt in the family that they could um, encroach on what appeared to be her territory. And, and she lived a really long time so that by the time she died, my mother and aunt, who are Gorky's children, were really quite grown up and in, couldn't really were having to learn new skills and new face new situations in a sense they were just looking into the gorky situation at that point and um, and they didn't feel they could that anything could be done partly because that's the culture of their generation and um, so I thought well, no one's going to do anything I've got to do it because even if I don't get it right straight away no one else is going to do it. I've just come back from a three-week tour of museums in the USA. Uh, it is a first um, effort to liaise with the curators for me to learn about Gorky, looking at Gorky's actual work as opposed to reproductions and also to engage curators and directors in a conversation so that together we can look at Gorky again and uh, look for current um, ways of engaging with him. The museum audiences have changed a lot in the last decades and uh, the expectations also of museums and audiences have changed and meanwhile there are perpetually more artists coming on the scene there is more competition for space, um, the way museums are funded has changed. So I feel that uh, uh, even great artists like Gorky need to have a, a, a way of engaging um, museums and uh, professionals on the other side of the audience um, in a way that evolves with the times. And how was the reaction of the curators? really positive. Uh, the curators generally love engaging with uh, uh, artists' families because they recognize that that is a direct link somehow to the perspective of the artist and in this case the artist is dead, has been dead for a very long time, almost 50 years, uh, no sorry almost 70 years. So um, so really, there is a lot of distance from Gorky's own time and a lot of distance really from his whole era. So it is definitely time to re-engage with uh, abstract expressionism and with someone like Gorky who is not entirely within but also definitely modern and mid-century American and is a way into what came later. And I feel it's been really good for Gorky and we discussed new ways of how to put more Gorkys on the wall in new ways and more relevant ways. National Gallery in Washington amongst other Gorky works has one of the portraits of the artist and his mother in which there is a young man and a grown woman and uh, she is wearing a headscarf and then you hear you know a little bit of the story and you know that these are refugees from the Ottoman Empire from an area part of the world that now is on the border between Turkey and Syria and that it was a photograph taken immediately preceding uh, the Armenian genocide which took place in or what we call the Armenian Genocide, that particular moment that took place in what is now a part of Syria that is experiencing 
a very intense conflict. So historically, there, there are several points of reference there. And at the same time, this was in Washington, a few months after the, the election of Donald Trump. And uh, when we are experiencing a migration crisis in the world, and also a lot of uh, anti-immigrant sentiment um, being picked up by evidently mainstream politics. So suddenly this painting acquires a relevance that maybe for some decades we felt comfortable localizing and making less general. Now it's a kind of a universal situation all over again. They are inspired to, they have an occasion to go into their booths, look at the, what is, what Gorky is in their collection, pull it out. So this is a great opportunity for conservators and uh, for the curators to look at the work with me. And then of course we start talking and uh, we see ways, my aim is to get more Gorkis, in the most basic way, more Gorkis on more walls. That is my primary aim. I have a kind of second objective, which is how to offer um, help uh, from, my, from my side, which is the family, the estate and the gallery, in bringing, in organizing little mini shows or possibly a bigger show. Anyway, offering support to show Gorky in, in more, in, in, again, or in new ways. How could that support look like? So, well, from, so as, as, as a family, we are actually major collectors of Gorky. And uh, we're also in a position to liaise with other collectors of Gorky. And uh, the gallery is also, galleries nowadays offer support for um, the estates they represent in different ways, also for the museums. They're also in an intermediary position. We're all in a mediating position between the various elements that make um, an artist alive in the audience's uh, imagination. And uh, the museums are, on, well, it's a, there's a sort of triangulation that has to go on. There are museums, that, there are galleries, the commercial side, there are auction houses, which is still part of the commercial side, and then the estates do the legacy work.